There's never a dull moment when it comes to Minnesota sports. Rather, it's positives or negative. The Yankees have swept the Twins. Minnesota Sports Chat has you covered. Talking nothing but Minnesota sports all year long. It's time now for the soon-to-be award-winning, if only in his own mind, Minnesota Sports Chat with your host, Ross Brendel. All right, here we go. I've lost track of the additions. I don't think I updated it. I think we're at 211. Oh, maybe it's 210. That's why I always say give or take. Let's go with 211 of the soon-to-be award-winning Minnesota Sports Chat. We are presented by Beans Coffee Company. Use the promo code SPORTSCHAT at coffeebybeans.com, and you'll save on delicious small-batch roasted coffee in Mankato, Minnesota. Guess who's back? Manny's back. We're way overdue, long overdue for a Manny Hill appearance on the podcast and the Manny quota. You can find him on the X machine at Manny Hill 84. He is the executive producer for MPS Voices, a product, a service of KBEM Jazz 88, where you can also hear his melodious tones from time to time and many projects here behind the scenes at Score North and the mighty. 1500 ESPN. Manny, my sincere apologies. Unless I'm missing something, I don't believe you've appeared yet in 2024. That's that's on me. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, because I think the last time you asked me to come on, I I couldn't because I had just I had way too much stuff going on. And so oh, well I then think- never never mind that it's all your fault. <laughs> It was not without effort. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll give you that. Give you well, that. Well, I I sincerely do appreciate it, and it's glad to I'm glad to have you back, so we can fulfill the Manny quota, which is supposed to be a monthly Manny Hill appearance. And I give Manny a hard time. No, it's on me for not being proactive enough. But glad to have Manny back. Him and I go way way back. I think to um, October of. 2005, Manny, we're coming up on our 19th anniversary here in about six months. So uh, start planning something big for the 20 year friend anniversary, okay? I'm, I'm on it. I'm putting it on you. I would like a diamond ring and a trip somewhere. <laughs> let's, let's get into it, Manny. Let's start with the A talker in town. It can be the middle of the offseason with nothing going on. Yet we still want to talk Minnesota Vikings football and we should talk Minnesota Vikings football because probably right now, even with the surging Minnesota Timberwolves, the Vikings probably the most interesting team in the state right now as we approach the draft where one month away from the NFL draft as this podcast drops Vikings likely to take a quarterback early in the draft. Manny Hill, my question to you is simply, do you care which quarterback they take? And my hunch is your answer is going to almost be in lockstep what I have been saying for weeks and now months when it comes to the quarterback position and who they draft. Do you care which one? Um, I, I care mildly. Um, I think, you know, I, I think when you kind of look at all of the well, let, let's just take like the top four because we know that, you know, they're they're exploring ways to trade up into the top four. I think there's no question about that. Um, so just kind of taking those anticipated top four quarterbacks that'll be drafted. I, you know, I I kind of favor Drake May over the other over the other three. Um, you know, Caleb Williams, I think, is gonna be terrific and and uh, and I and I like Jaden Daniels as well. And JJ McCarthy, I've kind of warmed up to, I think, in the last couple of months since the national championship game. Um, but Drake May is kind of the one that I I think I kind of prefer because, you know, he seems to kind of have all of the physical traits that Kevin O'Connell is 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 looking for. He's he's big, he's got a really strong arm. Um, he's athletic enough to where I think he can make some plays with his feet if he needs to. 
And uh, and he's really young. He's he still has yet to turn 22 years old, if I'm not mistaken. So um, he's kind of the one that I that I kind of prefer because I think it would be the best fit for them. But ultimately, Ross, I I think you know when the the moment that Kirk Cousins moved on, and really, you and I have talked about this off the air too, even before you know it was officially known that Kirk Cousins was moving on. My my belief was that this team needed to move forward with with a new quarterback, you know, to to try and contend for the future and everything and try to rebuild this thing. So at that point, to me, it's just big picture. You know what? Just pick a guy. You know, that's kind of how I feel about it overall. I mean, I have a preference for for Drake May, but really just just pick a guy and just have it be the right guy, you know, have it be the right the right decision and if you end up moving up to four and jj mccarthy is the number four guy there take him and don't look back and and move forward and and trying to build this roster around him going forward so yeah you basically said exactly what i would say i'm taking caleb williams out because i do believe he's going to go number one overall i know the vikings are doing their due diligence on him if the Vikings, he's, he's not going to be. He's, he's just correct. not going to be there. Correct. Yeah, right. If the Vikings could get to number one realistically and not give up five first round draft picks to do it, maybe they would. But I'm just going to cross his name off the list, and then that brings yep. you to Jane Daniels, Drake May, JJ McCarthy. I would probably go with either Jaden or Drake. I love what Jaden can do, just as far as the escapability and the athleticism. Mm-hmm. I'd lean towards Drake may being my favorite of those three, but at the end of the day, that's not an anti JJ McCarthy statement. That's not an anti Jane Daniels. It's not even right. anti Drake may what I'm about to say. I'm going to echo what you just said. It's the same thing. I say when you're talking about recruiting high school kids to play college football, basketball, or hockey, I don't necessarily care who you get, but I care that you get good players or you get the right ones. I care that on draft night, let's say the Vikings move up to three. Let's say the first two that go off the board are quarterbacks and the Vikings are left choosing. Let's say they're left choosing between JJ McCarthy and Jaden Daniels. Maybe Drake may goes number two overall. Mm -hmm. I just want the Vikings to take the quarterback that they like the most with the pick that they have left. And I will not be upset on draft night. If both, Drake May and J.J. McCarthy are there and the Vikings take J.J. McCarthy over Drake May. I won't be booing. I won't boo if it's the other way around. I just want the team to get it right. And we likely won't know that in year one, even if the quarterback that they draft plays in year one, whether that be five games or 17 games, if they look awful, that's probably not enough of a sample size. I've said the same thing about Bryce Young. Bryce Young's early returns were awful last year. I'm not mm-hmm. going to write him off for one year. I know it looks bad because of what CJ Stroud did, but CJ Stroud and the Houston Texans in a much better position than the Carolina Panthers. Yep. Just when it comes to organization and roster, the Vikings are going to be in a good situation with the organization and the roster. I just want to know in a couple of years down the road that you got it right. So I just like you, Manny, I have a preference for Drake may, because I believe you have to pull Caleb out of it. Like I already said, like you said, but I just want them to get it right. And we won't know that right away. So my plea to fans is if there's a few quarterbacks available that are going to go in the first round when the Vikings are picking and they pick one, Let's not roll on the new guy right away. Let's let the new guy show up and be awful and not progress before we roll on him. Let's just, let's all as Vikings fans rally around the pick and hope that they get it right. Assuming they take a quarterback, which I think is a fairly safe assumption at this point. It's not guaranteed. Things could go wrong. They might not be able to move up where they want to without giving up too much capital. So I, I, I understand that. But if they take a quarterback, let's just wait. Let's give it some time and hope that they make the right move. Yeah. And, and let's, let's be honest here. I mean, we, we can all have our own opinions about which quarterback we like more and what, you know, what we think about this guy and where's the best fit for this guy is going to be. 
truth of the matter is, Ross, we don't really know for sure. I mean, we how many times have you and I just over the years talked about different quarterbacks that we liked, and it turned out those guys ended up not being very good in the NFL. You know what it's I mean? Never and, happened. It's never <laughs> happened. <laughs> but you know, I I think the thing that we have to remember is, you know, you look at the look at the best quarterbacks in the league right now. I mean, would you would you would you agree the two best quarterbacks in the league right now are Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen? Yes. Yep. Yeah. I those would. are the top two guys, right? So, and I think a lot of people would agree that those are the top two guys. Well, Patrick Mahomes was what? 10th, 11th of the yeah. Chiefs in 2017. Josh Allen was what? Sixth or seventh, something like that. And those guys have, and, and I bring this up because, you know, everybody's looking at these top four quarterbacks and they're kind of picking them apart and they're saying, well, this guy, he he's not good at this. And uh, we've seen Drake may even, you know, get kind of dragged through the mud in the last couple of weeks by some top NFL analysts. And Drake and, and likes to like turn that. the Drake likes to turn the ball over. And I, I would still like, he does. Think, I still would like to think that that can be coached out of somebody, by the way, well, Josh Allen turned the ball over in college too, by the way. Yeah. He, and he, I love Josh Allen. Over. That's one. That's what I was right about, Manny. You'll remember 100%. that. I was, yes, I was on I Josh Allen that. about a year before everybody else. Yeah, I do remember that very well. And look, when Josh Allen came in from Wyoming, what was the thing that everybody was saying? Oh, he's inaccurate. He's raw. Yep. He, came, he played at a small school. The comp- level of competition wasn't good enough. And now he's like the second best quarterback on the planet. And Patrick Mahomes, same thing. It was, you know, oh, it's, it's a gimmicky offense. He's got bad footwork. He's inaccurate. Doesn't make great decisions. And now he's like, people are already putting him in the GOAT conversation with three Super Bowls. So. You just don't know what these guys, and I think, you know, to your point about the fan base being patient, you know, whoever this quarterback is, if it's J.J. McCarthy, if it's Drake May, if it's Jaden Daniels, that ends up with the Vikings. As a fan base, I encourage everyone to just to just be patient. The guy, pro, whoever it is, is probably not going to play right away because Sam Darnold's probably going to start the season as the starter. You know, we'll see what happens as the season progresses, but when that guy comes out and plays, whoever it is, just be patient with him. Don't jump off the, the the ship already if he throws a couple of picks and has a bad game or two. Well, and I've mentioned it on this pod before and um, some of the Purple Daily pods I appear on. I think best case scenario would be the quarterback that you draft doesn't play this year. Maybe Sam Darnold right. is good enough where the team, again, I'm not saying that this will happen and that Sam Darnold's going to have a great year and have a Baker Mayfield like year and resurrect his career and get a nice contract with somebody else next off season. I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is you can't with 100% certainty say that that won't happen. This is a really good opportunity for Sam Darnold and it's a player that the league still feels pretty highly on. That's why he's been up three teams already. People People think pretty highly of him, and he's never been in a situation starting with this much talent around him. You know, the Niners had a lot of talent, obviously, but he started, I think, just one game, and that was at the end of the year Mm -hmm. for Brock Purdy. And by the way, Manny, on drafting a quarterback, then we'll move on to the Minnesota Timberwolves. A good chunk of people are going to be wrong here. I mean, history says... One, if not two of these guys are not going to be starting NFL quarterbacks in three or four years down the road. So again, you take all the data you have, you take all the analytical data, you take your eye test, you take your interviews, you take the game film because the film don't lie. You take all of that, you put it together into one concoction. You come up with your number that says we're 72% sure this kid's going to be a franchise quarterback. And that's of all the other kids. This is the best percentage we have. Okay, you draft him and you hope and pray that you got it right. And I think that that's the best that you can do. And Kevin O'Connell was brought in to do this. So let him identify the quarterback that he wants. And look, yes, there's a chance it's going to be wrong and that the quarterback won't be an NFL quarterback. And I would say, what is worst case scenario? Worst case scenario is in three to five years, you're just trying to hit a home run with a franchise quarterback again. I don't understand what's wrong with that. Everybody was was always so afraid to move on from Kirk Cousins. If you're not in NFC championship games or competing for Super Bowls every year, I don't really care at this point. 
You know, I'm yeah. now pushing 40. I've been a Vikings fan long enough to know I don't care about div- winning divisions and maybe hosting one playoff game and seeing what happens from there on out. Now, this, this offseason starts for however long it takes, whether it's just this offseason or 10 off seasons, this started the clock of trying to find a real franchise quarterback. And I applaud the Vikings for more than likely or most likely doing just that. I mean, listen, the, the Kirk cousins thing. So the Vikings, including playoffs, I believe in the Kirk cousins era, which is six seasons, I believe won a total of 53 games. Now Kirk won 50 of those. And he had the three between uh, Josh Dobbs and Nick Mullins, Jaron Hall, all that, that whole combination. Uh, so 53 games from 2018 to 2023. And from 2000, I think it was 2012 to 2017, the six years prior to Kirk Cousins, the Vikings won 54 games, including playoffs. And this is with Christian Ponder and Josh Freeman and Matt Castle and right. who am I forgetting? Case Keenum, Teddy Bridgewater, uh, Donovan McNabb. Don, well, Donovan was gone because this was Donovan was 2011. So this was a year. The time frame is a year after Donovan was gone. But but you get my point. Like so, I, I mean, Sean Hill win a game in there. I think he did. Sean Hill won yeah, a game he, before Sam Bradford. Yeah, he might right? have. They, they traded have. for Sam Bradford. And that's that, right. The Tennessee, and, the Tennessee yep, opener Sean, in, in yeah. 2016. Yeah. Sean Hill was exerting all of his energy to throw it 15 yeah. yards downfield. So, so you, you saw this franchise win 54 games in the six years before Kirk cousins was here. And then he, then they won 53 in the, in the six years that he was here. So what are we really him moving on to Atlanta? I just don't, I've never really understood the, the fear of, losing him to free agency because what you got from him in the previous six years is exactly what you got from seven other starting quarterbacks in the six years before you signed him. So, and in that stretch, you made an NFC championship game before you even signed him. So, I mean, what are we doing here? You know, well, the Vikings are trying to get themselves back to their conference championship. One team in the mix for the Western Conference Championship, believe it or not, after all these years, Manny Hill of futility, is our Minnesota Timberwolves pretty much guaranteed a top three seed right now in the Western Conference. Still could go as high as number one. They get Denver a few times here at the end of the season. We know they're going to be a top three seed. My question to you on the Minnesota Timberwolves, very similar to what I asked you about the Minnesota Vikings and the quarterback quarterback I said do you care which one for the Minnesota Timberwolves my question to you do you have a preference on a first round opponent I will tell you I don't I believe this Minnesota Timberwolves team is good when healthy I think they're really good and a really good team yeah there's some teams that are going to give you more issues than others but a really good team with the caveat if they're healthy really shouldn't worry about who they have to play yeah, they they shouldn't. And you know, if you're if you're really serious about contending for a championship, it shouldn't matter who you're gonna face in the first round. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, if you can't get out of the first round, then you don't really deserve to be in the conversation of contending for a championship. You know what I mean? After the type of season that they have had. I mean, they're 49 and 22 as of this recording, and you know, sitting in third place in the West. And Listen, if you're going to get through the gauntlet that is the NBA's Western Conference, you're just going to have to first round, second round conference finals. You're you're going to have to play a good team. You're going to have to get through a good team. The Dallas Mavericks are the number six seed right now with Luka and Kyrie Irving at 43 and 29. That's if the playoffs are of the day, that would be your matchup. That's a tough matchup. Now, I think the Vi- or Vikings, I think the Timberwolves <laughs> <laughs> match up pretty well with Dallas. Um, because I think if you can kind of limit Luka Doncic, put a lot of pressure on Kyrie Irving, you know, you can kind of, I think you can kind of mitigate some of the the damage that they could cause offensively and defensively. I think that there's, there's some, there's still some issues with that team. Um, So I, so I would, you know, I would like that matchup if there's, if, you know, if you 
are forcing me to say like what matchup do I like the most? It's probably it would probably be that one. Um, but really, if you're talking Dallas, Sacramento, we've seen Sacramento give this team some problems this year. So as New Orleans, who you'll probably likely yep. avoid in the first round, but you may need to beat them in the second round. Right, exactly. And, you know, and even Phoenix, who's sitting right now in that eighth spot. Now, you know, the play in tournament will, you know, could muddy up some of this stuff, depending on what the Lakers and the Warriors do in that nine and 10 spot. But, you know, even if you move all the way up to one and you got to play Phoenix, let's say in the first round, that's not, you know, Kevin Durant and Devin Booker. That's 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 a tough out. That's going to be a tough, tough matchup. And if they get Bradley Beal back and healthy, that's just going to add to some to the potency of their offense too. So I think in the Western Conference, you're just getting in, try to get as high a seat as you can. You know, I would honestly like to see them get into that two spot. If they're not going to get the number one seed, Ross, I would like to at least see them get to that number two so- slot because that way, if they get out of the first round, they would still have home court advantage in the second round as well. And I think that that could be the difference there. So. You know, Oklahoma, they're right on the tail of Oklahoma City, and I think if they can just kind of keep things going, um, they can be in pretty good shape. And we've seen the energy at Target Center this year is off the charts, so I echo that. An extra home game in a series could easily be the difference between continuing to play basketball in your season coming to an end. Uh, well, how about this for a segue talking about one team season potentially coming to an end and another team season starting your Minnesota twins coming off a division championship. Finally, not just one Manny, not just two Manny, but three playoff wins last season and into the divisional, I almost said divisional championship, but the divisional series, Minnesota twins opening day is today. Very quickly season expectations, maybe a win total, I'm going with 89 and 73. They have a lot of injuries here out of the gate, but good news for them. The season six months, I would like to have seen them do a little bit more in the pitching department, but I think when guys are healthy or healthy enough, still think this is probably the best team in the division. I don't think they should have any problem winning the division or securing a wild card spot. So I'm not super down on the twins. Like some people are this off season, I like them at 89 or 90 wins this year. And I do believe that that will win the division. Yeah, I I'm, I'm with you. I got them at, I had them at 88 wins. Um, I think that this division is, you know, it's just, it's very meh. You know, when you, when you look at the rest of those teams, you kind of wonder like, well, is there, if, which one of these teams is really going to step up? I, Part of me, maybe the Tigers, think, probably. Yeah. See, I was thinking like the Tigers maybe could be that team that could kind of surprise people. I mean, the White Sox are a mess. The Guardians don't even seem to really care about contending. They haven't seemed to care about contending for a couple of years now. Um, and the Royals have some nice pieces. Bobby Witt is and is a fantastic young player, and it's kind of nice to see them get him locked up for 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 a long term. Uh, deal. Now we'll and see how long he thank, actually serves those years with the with the Royals. But thank goodness um, the Twins only have to play him thirteen times a season now and not nineteen. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, I I don't really see a, a a team in this division outside of the Twins that is ready to just like really step in and present a huge challenge. Now, some of these games will be tight and contested. You know, they might go. They might go seven and six against the Royals. Who knows? But I don't know if there's a, a team in this division that's really going to step up. Now, look, the Twins have to stay healthy. They have to get the pitching healthy. Um, and they do, I think, have to win enough games, you know, within their division to kind of separate themselves from everybody else. But I think they've got the roster to do it. Um, to me, it's it's just it's about, you know, guys like, you know, we talked about the pitching, but guys like Carlos Correa, I think, coming back and, and, you know, staying healthy for the entire season and hats off to him for, you know, battling through that plantar fasciitis last year and, and staying on the field. Um, But if he can come back, you know, fully healthy and really have the type of offensive season that we know he's capable of, that would be huge. And also, I mean, we talk about this every year, but Byron Buxton staying healthy too is, is would be a huge boost. And so, or just um, healthy enough. Healthy enough. You know, can you get 
can you give can you give this team 110 games yeah can, can you, you give them 110 games 120 games can you, you know, maybe on can you maybe only have two 10 day stints on the IL and then yeah. some off days mixed in I, I think I think if those two guys play the majority of your games you know 110 120 plus I think you'll be okay I think you're also hoping for the Walners and Juliennes to continue to develop and, and you I know say, what you know what you know who else we'd like to see stay healthy Royce Lewis oh that would be nice yeah, yeah, that would be I nice mean, because also we saw a very injury riddled career. He is, yeah. I mean, we we've seen we saw firsthand in the playoffs last year how dynamic and how awesome Royce Lewis is, and if they can get a full 130 to 140 games out of him too, that would be that would be just golden. I'm also not going to bury the Twins for signing a starting pitcher this off season that I believe to be of high quality. I will wait until we get through the MLB trade deadline and where the twins are at. If the twins decide on July 25th, I'll make up a name here. I'll just say Max Scherzer. Max Scherzer is available and we can have him for picking up what's left of his money this year in two or three prospects. That's, that's what I would say. Yeah, that's a good move. You go, you go do that. But I'm not going to bury them for not committing three years and 130 million to a starter in the offseason. Heck, even Jordan Montgomery, the deal looks good on the surface for one year and 25 million. But I'm still not sure at this point I would do that because he probably isn't going to give you any meaningful innings until late April since it took him so long to sign. So that's another thing you have to weigh. So. Uh, you know, to put a bow on the twins, I think they're going to be just fine. Like everybody, I wish they would have done a little bit more. But my pushback has always been, aside from maybe spending 30, 35 million a year on a starter for one year, two years, three years, whatever that is, what more did you think they were going to do? They were going to do what brought into the playoffs last yeah. year was a lineup that's pretty much already set. So they weren't going to go spend a lot of money in free agency on the lineup. I think they did one of the things I would want them to do. Find somebody like a Carlos Santana who can take professional at bats, maybe strike out a little bit less, grab a glove, play decent in the field. And maybe I would have liked to see a little bit more right-handed hitting come in, but whatever. I'm I'm just not going to get worked up about it yet. Yeah. I'll, I'll wait till they're treating games in April and May like they don't matter to get worked up like I always do. So yeah, I, I think I think overall what what you know, and I'm sure you'll agree with this. I think what you're looking for is the guys that are in that are in house already, the guys that are on this roster. You're looking for some of them to just come back and have have a you know regular you know somewhat fully healthy season, and some guys that just had kind of down years or setback years. You kind of hope that they bounce back from you know a guy like if we're talking about pitching, a guy like Joe Ryan. We hope that you know he's can be healthy and have kind of a bounce back year. Things didn't wrap up the way you 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 really wanted for him uh kind of late in the season. You know, how is you know what is Chris Paddock gonna look like when he, you know, is is fully in the rotation? Can he stay healthy? Are we going to get anything? Are they going to get anything out of him, you know, at this point? So I mean that's that's kind of what you're looking at is just the guys that you have in place. Can they have bounce back seasons from down years or can they stay healthy? Will Chris Paddock finish the year with two arms? That's what right. we're all yeah. hoping for and wondering. Would be uh, nice. It would be very nice. One thing that is very nice is your morning cup of beans coffee company. Can you have a cup of a company? I think you can. Maybe your beans coffee is what I'm trying to say. Thank you for supporting Minnesota Sports Chat, by the way, Beans Coffee Company. Uh, please do me a favor. I've been asking you now for a few weeks. If you're watching on YouTube, you're listening via podcast form, however you're consuming this podcast, go to coffeebybeans.com. If you're a coffee drinker or you have one in your life, take a look at all of their delicious choices for you. I know once you're there, you'll see something that piques your interest. And do me a favor. Give it a try. If you try it one time, you don't like it. You don't have to ever buy it again, but I got news for you. You're going to like it. I like it. Manny likes it. We know mm -hmm. whatever you're looking for. You're going to find it at coffeebybeans.com. You can order by the bag. You can set up a coffee subscription so you never run out. That's handy. Your cup of coffee, it's very important. So drink the best coffee around. B 
Pete's Coffee Company. They ship anywhere in the U.S. Free shipping on all orders of $35 or more. Here's the best part. I can save you a little bit of cash. The promo code SPORTSCHAT, that's SPORTSCHAT, one word, is going to save you some cash at checkout. That's coffeebybeans.com. Promo code SPORTSCHAT. Manny, let's close with this. Five filler questions. Does that sound familiar to you? You know that voice? That's our buddy Trevor Brown. You, uh uh-oh, you've been muted. Why am I not hearing you? Oh, no, that's my that's on my end. Sorry. Okay. Never I had the fader on my end turned down. <laughs> okay, good. It's our that buddy is Trevor, Trevor, though. That's awesome. It's my buddy Trevor Brown from the Inherent Dream Podcast Network helping me out on this edition of Minnesota Sports Chat and many editions with five filler questions. Let's play that again. Five filler questions. Number one. Manny, what are you currently binge watching? Or just what are you uh... watching? Oh wow, that's a that's a loaded question. Um, I just finished um, what is it the the uh, the thing on uh, Peacock the the thing with um Sam Neill and and uh, Annette Benning Apple uh, the apples apples oh, never fall or something like that. that. I, just, I just finished that. It's okay. It's okay. It's interesting. I was um, all excited. And- My excitement waned. At, it's okay. Yeah, the, the it was it was pretty good, and then it kind of ended the ending was kind of like huh really that's it okay that's kind of that's kind of how i felt with it but it was it was it was all right and that benning acting wise was was great she was terrific in it but um yeah uh you know me i i keep up on my law and orders and everything um that's about that's about all i'm really watching really I don't know if you're caught up on the new season of the original law and order but i do yeah. love the jack mccoy replacement it's it's i feel like it's going to be good i like it yeah. hugh dancy's fantastic in that show he's always oh, great he was great i hope he sticks around for a while yeah he's great uh Mikad brooks is really good oh, uh, the, the detective pairing i think they got it right after my guy jeffrey donovan left the show i think that this yeah. is a good pairing yeah no it's 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 fun i still uh i still enjoy it and um you know it's <laughs> We we know these shows don't really follow the way things really no, go in the world all. of police and and the law and and uh, you know the legal system and all that. But it's it's still it's still entertaining and the shows still hold up. My favorite part before we move on to number two. This happened in the most recent episode. This happens probably every other episode, Banny. The surprise witness that either the prosecution or the, or the defense <laughs> doesn't know about that never happens in real never. life. And then never. they're just not a chance. And then they're just prepared to question them. <laughs> like that. I just <laughs> that part. Excuse me, I'm still battling remnants of a of a sickness. It's been a an awful sickness. It just won't go away. But yeah, that part always cracks me up. Okay, here we go. Number two. What's worse, Manny? Extreme heat or extreme cold? Extreme heat. Yes. Because extreme cold, you can dress as warm as you yes. possibly can and survive it. Extreme heat, like there's, aside from getting fully naked, there's just nothing you can really do about it. Like, <laughs> and, and Manny. And you, can't, and you can't just get fully naked in public when it's really hot outside. And, and Manny, I don't even like seeing myself fully naked. So I don't think anybody else needs to see it either. <laughs> so, yeah, I totally agree with you. You can. I'm not saying I like extreme cold either. I'm just saying if I had to pick, if my only two options were 98 degrees in humidity or negative 15 with a wind chill of negative 40, I'm going to take the negative 15 with the wind chill of negative 40 because, like you said, I can dress for it. Number three. Do you need to win a championship in your sport to be an all-time great? No. I agree. No, Dan Marino, don't. perfect example. Yeah, Jim Dan Tomey, Marino. great example. Jim, Jim Tomey. I mean, I know he. Pretty sure he used performance enhancing drugs, but Barry Bonds was a great player and did not win a championship. Only made it to one World Series. Barry Bonds um, makes me angry because he was a Hall of Famer before cheating. I know, I know. <laughs> that, that just frustrates me. Alex Rodriguez too. Same thing. It's same thing. So, so frustrating. 
Well, but yeah, it, no, you don't. You don't need to. You don't need to win a championship to be an all-time great. One of the talking heads on one of the big show big shows was doing the old. Oh, they're a great player and they are a Hall of Famer, but I just can't evaluate them like such and such players who won championships. I get that when you're splitting hairs, but for the most part, you're going to try and tell me Jim Tomey's not one of the greatest baseball players of all time. Barry Bonds before cheating, heck, maybe with cheating, isn't one of the best hitters of all time. Dan Marino was doing things at the quarterback position, especially with passing yards that nobody else was doing at the time. You're going to tell me he wasn't the best. Look, we love to poke fun at Kirk Cousins, but it is more than just one singular person out there playing the games. Number four, Dairy Queen or Culver's? Culver's. You just gave me a great meme. Your thinking face right there for those <laughs> watching on YouTube. Yeah, the, the Culver's concrete mixer and that butter burger, man, that is just, yeah. that butter burger is an absolute delight and treat. I may have to uh, make a trip to one. I don't know if there's one <laughs> close to me. I, I live, you know, I live in Edina, so I don't know if there's one. I don't know if there's a Culver's like up the street from me or anything from where I live. Edina, huh? How often do you get to the cake store? <laughs> yeah, cake you eater. You are not the first person to ask me that question. <laughs> yeah, cake eater. Number five. <laughs> Number five and final question before we get out of here. I actually have no idea what this answer is. And again, at the beginning of the pod, we mentioned uh, about 19 years of friendship for Manny and I. Manny, what is something you've wanted to do but haven't yet? I will tell you I thought about this, but then got immediately terrified because there was an accident within the last few weeks. I would like to go on a hot air balloon ride, even though when you think about it, you're shooting fire into a balloon and you're hundreds of feet in the air. That just doesn't seem safe at all. But I would like mm. to do it. What would you like to do that you haven't done? Uh, I've been saying for years I would love to make a, a trip to either Italy or Greece. If anything, just to try the just to try the food, the the real authentic Italian food and uh, Greek food as well. So that's that's those two places have always been on my bucket list. What if we combine two things? What if we hopped on a hot air balloon and made that trip? <laughs> and then we can I make just, that happen. I don't think the balloon would make it over the pod, and I'm I'm fairly <laughs> fairly certain of that. Uh, Manny Hill at Manny Hill eighty four on the Twitter machine, a part of Jazz eighty eight MPS Voices. I know from time to time you might hear him on the Taxi Squad pod and some other stuff at Score North and fifteen hundred ESPN. Manny, this has been fun catching up. I know I saw you in person just a few weeks back, but great to see you on the pod. Thank you. Always a pleasure, my friend. This does it for edition number 210. Might be 211. Heck, it might even be edition number 212. We'll go with 211-ish. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you to Manny Hill for being on this podcast. Please, if you're watching on YouTube, like this video subscribe to the channel comment below if you're listening on apple or spotify please rate and review and most importantly please tell your friends and family all about this podcast it probably is the best way to spread the word about minnesota sports chat and please if you're a coffee drinker go to coffeebybeans.com that's coffeebybeans.com promo code sports chat i'll be back in this feed next week Thanks for listening to Minnesota Sports Chat, presented by Beans Coffee Company. Use the promo code SPORTSCHAT, that's one word, SPORTSCHAT, to save at checkout. Follow Ross on X at the Ross Brendel. Like and subscribe to Minnesota Sports Chat wherever you get your podcasts. Rate and review kindly.